Wow. Uh, good afternoon, or as my uh, Serbian friends would say, Popodne. Welcome to Maple Leaf Square. Uh, my name is Paul Jones, and I'm a, the play-by-play -play broadcaster on the radio for the Raptors. Happy Pride and National Indigenous Heritage Month. In addition, the Raptors acknowledge that Scotiabank Arena is located on the ancestral homelands of the Anishinaabe, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and the Chippewa peoples. This land, where we have the privilege to gather, play, and compete, has been governed by the dish with one spoon wampum belt for a thousand years, and in more recent times by the Williams Treaty and Treaty 13. Today, Toronto is still home to many diverse Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island, whose presence and contributions we recognize and acknowledge. As an organization, the Toronto Raptors affirm their commitment and other recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission as they do to advance right relations with Indigenous peoples. Miigwech. Thank you. It's wonderful to see so many familiar faces in the audience, including Mr. Larry Tannenbaum. Happy anniversary. It was four years ago today that we were starting to plan a big parade. And also members of the MLSC Board of Directors, Executive Leaders, and of course, Raptors membership. Special welcome to Gaga Ryakovic, and in my best Serbian Gaga, Drago Mije. Thank you for all, all for being here. A few housekeeping notes before we get started. Uh, following the remarks from our guests, we will open up to a Q&A uh, from the media and then break into a photo op. Uh, I kindly ask, uh, I know it's not a movie, but could you all silence your cell phones? I just did that, put them in my pocket. Uh, today is a very exciting day, for, again, for the Raptors organization. Uh, as they not only introduce the 10th head coach in franchise history, but as I said, celebrate the four-year anniversary of the NBA championship. So without further ado, please welcome to the stage Raptors Vice Chairman and President Masai Ujiri and your head coach, new head coach of the Toronto Raptors, Darko Ryakovich. for the people to gather. Perfect. Thank you. Wow, this is unbelievable. Um, thank you, everybody, for uh, coming out. And um, first of all, Larry Tannenbaum, I think uh, Cynthia, CEO, is here. Um, to all the staff, everybody around, um, Bobby Webster, Teresa, Dan, uh, it's been an incredible a process for us. Uh, I know um, you have all been patiently waiting. Uh, some of you uh, impatiently waiting too. <laughs> um, but um, we're really, really excited uh, for this day. I know it's change and sometimes change is hard, but we believe change is good and change is uh, good for our ball club uh, and our organization now. And it's such an honor um, after a long process um, choosing uh, what we feel is the right fit and incredible coach um, with great passion, uh, great knowledge, um, has been part of incredible programs um, to come and lead our, uh, our beloved Raptors here and uh, we're really excited uh, to welcome uh, Coach Dako. Welcome, man. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much.
please. I got I gotta take it in for a second. <laughs> this this is amazing. Uh, thank you, first of all, everybody coming out today. Like uh, right now, I'm like that uh, duck on the, on the surface of the water. That the eggs, like everything is cool, but my feet are down there, like working. <laughs> I'm really, really excited. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Uh, Larry Tannenbaum and uh, his wife Judy. I would like to th thank uh, Masai, Bobby, Teresa, Dan, um, Alex, everybody uh, from from the organization. Uh, this is amazing, amazing privilege to represent. Uh, um, Toronto Raptors uh, championship organization. Uh, it's amazing uh, privilege to be part of a, a such amazing roster. I would like to thank Joe and uh, Ron and Jeff and uh, Delano and Loco and all the guys who are here that are here to, today present, but also all other players that I, uh, I've been in touch last couple of days and talked to. Uh, this is definitely a very, very exciting moment and uh, be the North. Masai, I know you touched on it, but at this time, you had so many candidates to choose from. Why did you feel that Darko was the right fit? Yes, we, we did have um, many incredible um, candidates, and we wanted to go through a process uh, here um, because of this, uh, where the stage at which our, our team is. And um, I think Darko just hit all of it, and um, depending on where um, our team uh, could be. Um, we're excited. We're excited to have uh, his knowledge, uh, his experience. Um, I think the study, being, being so studious of the game, his journey, um, diversity, everything, you know, like uh, to me, uh, his incredible family, Gaga. Um, it's to me, uh, it all comes together in some kind of way and um the process was um was long and tough you know like but we know we came i uh, came up with the right um a candidate here i do want to thank bobby uh, Teresa, dan keith uh, alex the whole team you know um i say it again i think these guys do an incredible job with the process of um uh, how we go through these things and all the information we need and uh, and also the leadership in our organization the support we get it's very important for us um, we know what our values are here and like i said change is good you know change is is something that sometimes is tough and um, we feel that uh, darko um, fits it it's a good time for the serbs uh, right now you guys know <laughs> i want to be a you uh, Masai Ujirianovic. That's what that, <laughs> that's that's what I want to be now um, with Jack, um, tennis, uh, basketball. We saw Jokic yesterday, and now we'll bring this special guy here. So uh, oh, we're glad great. to have him. We have our own Serbian superstar. Yeah. Uh, Darko, you're the second ever Serbian and European born head coach with the world breaking down barriers everywhere. What does this mean to you? Um, this means the world to me, uh, means uh, so much uh, to Serbian community. Uh, here in Toronto, a lot of people reached out to me. Uh, means a lot to, to uh, family back home and the uh, whole basketball community in, in Serbia. Um, I started coaching when I was 16 years old, and uh, now, some 27 years old, later, I'm at, uh, appointed to be a head coach of unbelievable organization and to, to uh, have a chance to live in an amazing city like Toronto is. And uh, I'm just proud to, to be over here today and uh, to represent. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Darko. Uh, we'll now take questions from uh, members of the media, if you have a question, please raise your hand and a microphone will be brought to you. Please introduce yourself by stating your name uh, and your organization. Darko? It's uh, Doug Smith of the Toronto Star, off to your left here. Um, obviously in 27 years as a head coach, 
you would have worked for very different kinds of people. How would you, how would you describe your coaching philosophy and how you've grown as a man since you become now at 44? Um, since the day I started coaching, uh, for me, the biggest thing that I enjoyed is seeing players get better, players improve. You know, you're gonna win games, you're gonna lose games. Uh, definitely, we want to win every, every single game, every single night. But see, seeing the team grow, seeing the players grow, seeing uh, uh, people in whole organization grow is something that always uh, was my uh, biggest award. And that's how I operate. I'm trying uh, to wake up every single day with that, that on my mind. How can I help? How can I serve? How can I improve uh, everybody in the organization? Your Michael Grange from Sportsnet. <laughs> Your connection uh, our relationship with Masai and, and maybe Bobby, whoever, how did uh, you guys arrive at this place? Uh, is it long standing? And, and maybe Masai, uh, a little bit of how you uh, arrived at, at Darko and maybe where that relationship began. Uh, you know, run into each other in uh, a few places, and I, I think uh, the admiration has always uh, been there. Um, when I was scouting and lived in Serbia, I never uh, met him at that at that time. I was probably uh, too young. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> but um, you know, this game takes us to incredible incredible places, and um, the the word always kept coming. You know, like to him, his name, um, and all our scouts. Um, uh, representation from the teams have it's all uh, intertwined in some way you know and it's all related in 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 some way and um, and yeah we are we find him uh, we find we find him here yeah, I'm just wondering so was it only during this process that you guys actually met and established a relationship or was it long-standing before that um, we started uh, really to get know uh, each other through the process, uh, but there was always uh, admiration on my side uh, for what Masai and Bobby and, uh, and Larry did uh, <clears throat> with the team and how much passion and commitment they had to, uh, to run the things the right way. Uh, the first time that we started uh, talking on a Zoom call, what I felt from day one was like unity and uh, everybody on the organization, you could just feel that everybody's together. And the uh, very next conversation we had, I was blown away. Like when I flew over here to, to meet him in person, I, I, I needed to pinch myself, like uh, to, to be in the presence of the, the best president and the best GM and the best ownership in, uh, in, in the league is, uh, is, is a huge, huge privilege. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm just blown away from every day what I'm learning uh, about the organization and the team. You know, I just told Masai, like, last three days I had a smile on my face so much that my jaw started to hurt. So I'm really, really happy to be here. We haven't told him the bad parts yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Darko, Josh Lewinberg, TSN, welcome and congratulations. Hey. I know you started coaching at a young age. What, what drew you to coaching initially and who have been some of the bigger influences on your coaching style over the years? Um, so yes, since I started coaching, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a funny story. So uh, when I start, stopped playing, I was just like 15 years old. And uh, to be honest with you, like, the, it looked like the world crashed on me. Like I stopped like, learning, you know, being a good student. I, I, I lost my identity. And when my team organized the basketball camp in my hometown for, for little kids, uh, they invited me to, to uh, be there and coach those kids, uh, which started on August 2nd, 96. And uh, funny story is that one of the kids in that group actually was uh, the brother of my, my wife, Gaga. And that's actually how we started meeting. Uh, but uh, uh, the amazing thing is, uh, like, even with those kids that were like seven, eight years old, when I saw their improvement and, and how they grow and they got better, that's really what hooked me into the game. And over the years, I had such amazing uh, 
a tremendous like mentors. Uh, back in Serbia, great coaches. Uh, I had a great mentor with uh, Red Star Belgrade in uh, um, Marin Sedlacek, uh, who had great connections with the uh, United States and uh, working as a Nike Cup director. He really approached me, uh, United States and NBA, and the way of doing things uh, overseas. And then over the years, <coughs> I became very close friend to Željko Bradović, uh, Sergio Scariolo, um, Pablo Lasso, all the great coaches in Europe, and I was always learning from them. And then coming to United States, I was just blessed. I was blessed to be part of the great coaching staffs and great teams to coach under uh, uh, Scotty Brooks and to work with uh, for such an organization uh, like Oklahoma City that I had like tremendous respect for, for Sam Presti and everybody there. It, all of the, the, these people made great, great influences on me as a coach. Uh, going to Phoenix and working with uh, Monty Williams and James Jones just got me to another level, learning uh, how different organizations operate. And uh, being last three years in uh, Memphis with uh, Taylor Jenkins and uh, Zach Kleiman and the team there, I just like completely like started embracing uh, the, the, the NBA and really seeing uh, that this can happen, that actually I can be here one day and being a head coach of NBA organization. So I'm very, very uh, thankful and grateful for all the people in my life that helped me on this road. Hi, Darko. Welcome to Toronto, Aaron Rose, SI.com. Um, maybe the Raptors asked you this in your interview, but what do you see as your strengths as a coach and what are areas that you're looking to improve as you take over here? Um, I see uh, I see my love and the passion for game and uh, my commitment to the team as my biggest strength. This is not about me. This is about those guys. This is about the team, how we're going to get to the, to the next level. My goal is not to get one player better, but all 17 players in the roster, how we can improve those guys and help those guys. Uh, so, so my core belief is when you improve players, like that it's much easier to put strategies and tactics in, and that's gonna give you result, that's gonna be your outcome. So uh, I always operate like that. Uh, for me, season does not start in October. For me, season start, started three days ago when I was appointed here as a head coach, and I'm trying to win every single day. You know, when we come in our practice facility on the board, we have a win, you know, for, for every day. And we need to win every day. It's not just about winning a game. It's a winning, like, is the lineup gonna cut a little bit better? Is are we gonna move the ball a little bit better? Are we are we gonna be more together and more team? The more we have that, the better we're gonna be, and uh, and uh, that's gonna make all of us uh, proud of our team. Hey Darko, Vivek Jacob, Raptors.com. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned the importance of you know building that relationship with the players. Uh, what do you feel are the keys to connecting with your players on a human level? Um, first of all, I want to be very invested in, in uh, them as a human beings and as a, I see as a, every player as, as a, a person uh, with a family, with uh, all what's going on in their lives. I want those guys to know and to feel that I really care about them and I really want to connect, uh, connect with all those, those guys on personal level. You know, when they know that how much I love them and care about them, I have a strong belief that they'll be gonna come together as a group and be ready to, to take it to another level. Hey Darko, uh, Ryan Wolstaff from the Toronto Sun. Welcome to Toronto, congratulations. Just curious about uh, making the jump to the head coaching role. Um, what do you think of that transition and why you're ready for it and what's gonna change for you? Well, um, I was a uh, head coach for uh, 17 years before becoming assistant coach for the first time in, in NBA. So I was in that uh, hot seat for, for many, many years uh, overseas, coaching in Serbia, coaching in Spain, coaching in G League level. So I'm very, uh, you know, familiar with the look, what it looks like to be a decision maker. Uh, and to live that life uh, day in, day out. And last uh, uh, eight, nine years being assistant coach in NBA just helped me to see it from another angle. And I have a, a, a deep trust and a commitment in, in the team and also in the front office and working with Masai and Bobby and everybody in the organization. I know that we're gonna be one, that we're gonna be together and uh, that we will be able to elevate our team. Hey Darko, Eric Pardeen from The Athletic, congratulations. Uh, 
what are your impressions of the roster as it is that you are going to be coaching, and what are some of the strengths that you're looking to highlight uh, with that roster? Um, I really like the roster, the way it's built. Uh, every single day I'm getting to know those guys more uh, as a players and as, as a people. Um, I think that uh, Masai and, and Bobby and everybody did a tremendous job over the years and they proved that they have an amazing uh, talent uh, to, to recognize the right people and right fits. And I'm really, really excited to get to work with those guys. Hi, Orrin Weisfeld, Yahoo Sports Canada, Darko, welcome to Toronto. Um, this organization has always been very international, both in its popularity and the people who work here, players, staff. I'm wondering what it means to you to coach the only organization based outside of the United States and to kind of help grow the game internationally. That's a great question and uh, definitely it's, it's a privilege to be part of, uh, of the uh, organization like this with uh, such an international influence and uh, a lot of diversity that we have inside the city and inside uh, the organization. And uh, that just proves how NBA is growing. Like 20, 30 years ago, it was kind of like, you know, United States. Now it's a, such a global game. And uh, it is uh, um, the only NBA team outside of the US uh, being in Toronto or here. I could not dream about being in a better situation and in a better city to, to, to lead a team. Hello, uh, Darko. Uh, by the way, I, I know Dani Gomez Otero, that I, you, you were working uh, with him in Spain, in Espacio de Torre Yes. Uh, yes, my question is um, related uh, with the last question. Uh, in terms of uh, European coach that uh, you have been, uh, uh, you have coached in Europe, uh, what, what can you give to the organization uh, um, from the European perspective in, in terms of the, of the game? Uh, in the, in the, in the, the influence of, of Europe in the, in the game. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, as you probably know, to be a coach in, uh, in Europe, you've got to go through school. And I finished the basketball school for coaches in Serbia. When I came to Spain, they made me go to school again. So <laughs> I had to do that this time in Spanish. Uh, so that's, uh, I think that I had a, a great uh, baseline to learn about biomechanics, to learn about sociology, to learn about uh, psychology, to learn about so many different aspects that are important for the game. So understanding uh, from that perspective how the game is, is played and developed, I think is gonna be my uh, uh, big strength in working with everybody in the organization. And uh, I am Serbian and I'm an international coach with a broad uh, experience in NBA. Um, I always say like every time and uh, my season is over, I go back and I watch uh, EuroLeague and I watch the best teams and learning from the best coaches. But I also watch college and learn from the best co co college coaches and I learn from NBA. Um, learning in this profession does not stop. And uh, I am uh, eager to learn from uh, players, uh, from uh, my coaching staff, from people in the front office. As I said, it's not about me, it's about my daily approach, how I'm gonna be get better so I can be better for the team. Hi, Coach Ryakovich. John Chili helping the Canadian press. Dovo Doshni, go to Toronto. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> thank you. I practiced. Um, <laughs> my question for you is, uh, just a couple of months ago, Mr. Ujiri spoke passionately about the importance of culture on this basketball team. I'm curious, what kind of culture do you want to bring to the Raptors? Um, the most important thing for me is that it's going to be a uh, shared vision. You know, uh, knowing the team, uh, talking to Masai, talking to Bobby, talking to Larry. We really want to have an amazing group of people working together. Like that's, that's, and that's something that's off the court, but also on the court. Uh, for me, culture starts with uh, your daily commitment to yourself and your team. And that starts with, uh, with me, starts with, uh, with players, starts with everybody in the organization. And uh, that unity and that trust that we're gonna have between us, it for me is, uh, is, is everything. Hey Darko, Samson Folk, Raptors Republic, congratulations, welcome to Canada. So this is a little bit more of a basketball on-court question. I commend you on the conversations you've had publicly about implementing offense and talking about basketball for public consumption. Not that much of it is covered defense. What are some of the defensive 
principles that you have in mind for this team that can be acted by the players on the roster? Right. Um, defensively, I think uh, that one of, one of the strengths of this team is uh, the length that we have on the team and ability to do so many things from switching, from different coverages on the ball and off the ball. Um, for me, everything defensively starts with protecting the paint. If you protect the paint, after that we're going to take away corner threes and we're going to have uh, late contested uh, wing threes. We can get in X and O's and I can draw you our schemes but when we get a chance. I would love to do that, uh, but uh, uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, to talk with uh, with our guys as well and see their comfort level with all of these things. Uh, all decisions that I'm going to be making, uh, I'm going to consult uh, with with players and uh, people in the organization, with my coaching staff. Uh, so uh, don't worry, we're going to have really good defense. Coach, welcome to the city, Savannah Hamilton from Sportsnet. From your global perspective, how much have you seen the game stylistically change and grow? And where do you see it going, especially with this team? Um, game has changed so much, like uh, from 90s to uh, early uh, 2000s. Like even like when I came to the league 10 years ago, game was played played differently. Everybody talked about, oh, Serge Ibaka is a stretch four; he can shoot the ball. Now you have everybody being able to shoot the ball and put it on the deck and make plays. I think the game is going into that direction, that, that everybody on the team got to be able to do multiple things. I think that the game is slowly disappearing, like you're going to be like just defensive guy and knock down court on threes. I think that game and the way I see the game, I want all the guys to be involved in decision making and playing together and making each other better. Hi, Darko. Ilya Markovic, Serbian Toronto TV. Uh, I'll be switching to Serbian uh, for this part. Hopefully, most can understand me. Dobrodošao nam, Darko. Prvo, presvećili smo što si ti naš novi trener. Teo sam samo da pitam kakvi su ti prvi utisci Toronto i ako na kraju možeš samo da se javiš svim srpskim gledalcima. Hvala puno. Izuzetno sam počastvovan i srećan da budem ovde. Znam da u Torontu ima dosta Srba, koliko sam čuo nekih 50.000 i to je divna stvar jer ceo grad je internacionalni grad. Znate kako, tokom sezone dođemo u hotel, autobus, utakmica i idemo dalje. Sada je ipak tu predivno vreme koje imamo danas priliku da uživamo i predivni ljudi u ovom gradu. Sve što čujemo u gradu su fantastične stvari i zaista se radujem da budemo ovde da se družim sa našim Srbima i sa svim ljudima u gradu. We'll all be able to understand that fluently in a couple of years, Starko, honestly. That concludes the... Let me get on the right page here. Thank you for everybody for coming out. This is awesome. This is really cool. It is, it is. Thank you, Masai and Coach. It is. It is. And I think we should really, really like honestly like appreciate this moment uh, with the Toronto Raptors because um, I think we've changed eras a couple of times. We've cha made changes a couple of times, but um, uh, I'm calling on all the fans, on everybody, people in the organization, everywhere, you know, like that. This is a time to follow. This is a time to support. This is a time to go. Let's go and win. You know, like it's Let's go and do it again. We saw this thing happen last night. We've done it here before, and we're going to do it again. Amen. All right, to the members of the media with the formal portion done, uh, we're going to rearrange the stage for a photo op, uh, followed by a second photo op in front of the video board out in the main part of the square. If you have any questions, uh, please see any of the Raptors media relations staff to Coach Rakovic and Gaga Dobrodošli. <laughs>